Barney Frank is a former member of Congress who is almost universally adored by not just the party, but members of the party who vote for them. And this is in part because, one, he was very outspoken, he was entertaining, uh, he was the first member of Congress to actually get married to someone of the same sex. The problem is that nobody wants to critique him because of this. He's this, you know, he's this hero because he's an openly gay congressman, or he was. And so everybody's silent when he speaks. So when he says these crazy things, people are disinclined to actually speak out against him. But I'm going to go ahead and do that because I am sick of him running his mouth against Bernie Sanders. And in an interview with Slate, he decided not just to slam Bernie Sanders, but he actually criticized Bernie Sanders supporters as well. Not kidding. So when it comes to angry progressive voters... Uh, he says, I am disappointed by the voters who say, okay, I'm just going to show you how angry I am. And I'm particularly unimpressed with people who sat out the congressional elections of 2010 and 2014 and then are angry at Democrats because we haven't been able to produce public policies they like. They contributed to the public policy problems and now they're blaming other people for their own failure to vote. And then it's like, oh, look at this terrible system. But it was their voting behavior that brought it about. Now, the interviewer responded by saying, it seems like you're saying Bernie's voters have a slightly unrealistic sense about the political process. And he said, oh, I didn't say slightly. Bernie Sanders has been in Congress for 25 years with little to show for it in terms of his accomplishments. And that's because of the role he stakes out. So what you're seeing here is a classic case of victim blaming. Don't blame the fact that we hold elections during the week when people have to work. Or don't blame these voter ID laws that are prevalent in very many states like Arizona where you have to wait for five hours in line and people with a disability or who have to get back to work can't stay. Don't blame that. Blame the voters for not getting out to vote. That's what you're going to do. And furthermore, uh, even if the barriers to voting were diminished... You expect us to be excited about the Democratic Party? Look, I'm not defending people not voting. I think we should all vote. But you expect us to be super excited about the 2014 lineup of Democratic candidates? In 2014, Obama's approval rating was pretty low. So you had all these Democrats pretending to be Republican lights and were running away from Obama's record. So for example, you had Alison Lundergan Grimes in Kentucky who wouldn't even admit that she voted for Obama. And then you had Mark Pryor, who was pretending to be a theocratic candidate. I'm not Barack Obama. I disagree with him on guns, coal, and the EPA. And Mitch, that's not how you hold a gun. I'm not ashamed to say that I believe in God and I believe in his word. That's what we're supposed to get excited about, Barney Frank? Really? <laughs> and then you blame us when we don't get out to vote for these corporatist centrist candidates? See, now you can blame voters partially for not getting out to vote, but if the party isn't exciting anyone, if you're not getting out the vote, if you're not fighting against these voter ID laws, if you're not fighting to make voting a national holiday, then you have to take some responsibility. But what he's doing is he's transferring the responsibility unilaterally from the party onto voters. This guy's unbelievable, and yet he's universally admired by the party and people who vote for the party. No, this guy is a bad guy. Not only is he corrupt, but he's just wrong on the issues. Now, when it comes to why people are angry and why Sanders says the political system is fundamentally corrupt, this is what he had to say. The financial system is people lending money to other people so they can do things. I do think that he overstates it when he says they're all corrupt. It's simply not true. And by the way, when it comes to specifics, the only specific I have heard is Glass-Steagall, which makes very little change in the finance system. I think Sanders gets a pass from the media. Other than Glass-Steagall, what did he propose in 2009 and 2010 when he was a senator when we were dealing with this? The answer is nothing. Why haven't you looked at his record? Okay, let's put the brakes on this for a second and break down what he just said and how ridiculous this is. This is the former highest ranking member of the Financial Services Committee for the Democratic Party. And he said that Glass-Steagall didn't do much. He said it didn't change. It makes very little change in the financial system. Genius. I'm not sure if you recognize this, but repealing it led to the Great Recession in 2008. Did you miss this one fact? Because it's a pretty big fact. You were the head of the Financial Services Committee for the Democratic Party. You didn't realize that repealing it would lead to this disaster? Either you're lying or you're incredibly dumb. Now, you're right about one thing. Bernie Sanders is getting a pass from the media. But he's getting passed on altogether. 
So they're not even covering him. They're ignoring him entirely. He won three landslides from diverse states, what they said he needed to win, and there were crickets. They were silent. Nobody covered it. So yeah, he's getting a pass, Barty Frank, but for a different reason than you're stating. Now, he was asked about Hillary Clinton's corruption, and of course, he took it as an opportunity to attack Bernie Sanders. When asked, do you think she should release her Wall Street speeches? He says, yeah, but I don't think anybody is really against her because she won't. By the way, I think Sanders has been outrageously McCarthyite on that. And he clarifies by saying, yes, I saw one commercial that said the big companies weren't punished. Why? Well, maybe it's because Hillary is getting speaking fees. So the Secretary of State should have been indicting people? I mean, yes, McCarthyite in the sense that it's guilt by association. He claims about what she did with regards to all this money stuff. Where's the beef on that? And he continues, what Sanders basically says is they're trying to bribe you. Well, what do they get for money? He shows nothing. There have been a couple of cases of Republican senators trying to weaken the Dodd-Frank Act. Elizabeth Warren has been a much more successful defender of that bill than Senator Sanders has been. There was this complaint, oh, she had contributions from Wall Street. So did Barack Obama. So does every Democrat because you can't unilaterally disarm. Actually, you can. Bernie Sanders has proven that not only can you raise a sufficient amount of funds to stay in the race and run for president, you can actually outraise the candidate who's taken millions from billionaires and Wall Street. Hillary Clinton. So yeah, you can unilaterally disarm and you can no longer use this line of attack against Bernie Sanders and use it as an excuse to justify Hillary Clinton taking millions from the companies that screw us over, such as the health insurance industry, such as the financial services industry. It's ridiculous and it doesn't hold weight anymore. So the question is, why would Barney Frank go through such lengths to attack Bernie Sanders. Well, I'll tell you. So first and foremost, he's a multimillionaire. It's estimated that his net worth is between 1.9 to 4.6 million. So there's one clue. So he doesn't have to worry about healthcare or the cost of education like us peasants. He's got that covered. He could sit back and relax. He's retired. He gets his full retirement, mind you. Uh, whereas the American workers, they transferred from pensions to 401k sister systems that ripped them off entirely. Barney Frank doesn't have to worry about that. He's not no peasant like us. So he doesn't have to worry about anything that we worry about. Now, second of all, birds of a feather flock together. So he had the same donors as Hillary Clinton, JP Morgan Chase, American banker, Association, Bank of America, and he was the leading Democrat in the House Financial Services Committee. So he literally took money from the groups he claimed to regulate. You want to know who's a bigger icon in the LGBT community than Barney Frank? His name is Bernie Sanders. See, when Bernie Sanders was on the floor in the 1990s condemning homophobia of his peers, guess what Barney Frank was doing? Nothing. He was silent. You use the word homos in the military. You have insulted thousands of men and women who have put their lives I'm talking on the line. about I you and liberals like you. That... So instead of thanking him for fighting for your rights before you even had the courage to come out of the closet, you condemn Bernie Sanders. You side with the establishment. You pick the candidate who fought against your rights. You pick the candidate who's going to screw us over because she has all these donors who she's beholden to that are not looking out for us. And as a result, Hillary Clinton can't look out for us because she, it, her hands are tied. So that's who you decided to side with. Look, here's the thing about Barney Frank. This guy is a corrupt establishment politician. That's, that's the end of the story. Uh, you can uh, look at him as, you know, a, a gay icon if you want to do that. I wouldn't do that. Uh, you can support his policies. You can agree that he's quick-witted and that he's funny and that, you know, he's very intelligent. But you can't dispute the fact that this guy is 100% establishment through and through and that he will fall over himself to support his establishment buddies, right or wrong, because he was the same way. So he empathizes with them. He's a millionaire. He's an oligarch. He doesn't understand the struggle of ordinary citizens and how a $12 minimum wage is not sufficient, how that $3 difference is make or break, how even if we have health insurance, we're underinsured and we can't use it because we have to pay these high multi-thousand dollar deductibles. Barney Frank doesn't understand that. So this guy is not a democratic hero.